On today's DSLR video skills, we'll explore the benefits of using a field monitor to clearly see what your camera's shooting. Adorama TV presents DSLR video skills with Rich Harrington, where you'll learn all about videography and photography. Hi, this is Rich Harrington for Adorama TV, and today we're taking a look at field monitors. Now, you've seen this useful field monitor pop up in a couple of our last episodes. I absolutely love having a field monitor. There are so many times when this really comes in handy. For example, right now, we're dealing with some mixed light. I've got the sun over my shoulder, shadows over here. It's really difficult to judge what's happening, both from an exposure and a focus point of view. Sure, I could take out my loop and go to the back of the LCD, but I have to pop off if I really want to make adjustments on the camera. It's hard to be holding this up to the back and adjusting the dials or the variable ND filter. So I really like having the monitor, and there's things that really stand out about this Adorama monitor that makes it a great value. A couple things here on the back. This monitor has the ability to run off of battery power. So here I'm just using a very typical Canon camera battery. Now, I'm shooting with Nikon today, but we've got Canons in our office as well, and it's easy to power this, but you don't have to just use Canon. Notice that just pops right off, and you can get different adapter plates for different types of camera batteries giving you some flexibility with how you power the device. Plus, you get the ability to run directly off of alternating current if you need it to plug into the wall. All right, you just switch between those two. Got analog inputs. We've got two HDMI ports here, one in, one out. What's nice here is that I'm connected to the camera and then I'm looping out of this HDMI port into a Blackmagic Hyper Shuttle so I can actually take advantage of Canon's ability to pass through uncompressed HD video out the HDMI port. Now remember, you can't record to the card and to the external recorder. We'll cover how to use these type of devices on a future episode, but this works out pretty well here. Now, when I turn this around, what's nice is I have this detachable hood. Comes right off with Velcro. Or if you're working in conditions like today where there's a lot of sun, it really comes in handy to just block that sun out. Just fits right in there and provides some good cover. Hi, this is Rich Harrington. Be sure to check out Adorama's latest contest and your chance to win great prizes. All right, let's get the shot up. All right, that's looking pretty good there. I can clearly see what's happening with my shot, much like I could on the back of the camera's LCD, but it's a bit difficult to make accurate judgment. You might not be able to tell, but I'm squinting a little bit, I'm wearing a baseball hat. The sun is right over my shoulder. It's providing great light from my subject, but it's making monitoring pretty difficult. But with the hood, that helps. And the monitor here has four function buttons on the front. What's nice is they do different tasks. So the first one here is peaking. And this is a great way to check your focus. So as we adjust focus here, notice that it snaps into red. Let's adjust with the follow focus here. There are the trees in focus. And my subject's pretty good there. The tree next to our model is really helping there. It's helping me see where the focus point is. Lots of detail to use the focus in red or the focus peaking feature. All right, the thing here is when I change the aperture, I let a lot more light into the camera. It looks a bit overexposed on the back here, but let's find out just how much. Pushing F2 on the monitor gives me false color. And essentially false color is very similar to the zone system that were made popular by photographers like Ansel Adams, where different zones are highlighted here in different colors to help you understand sort of where the exposure falls. So let's just change the exposure here, and you'll see that the brightest areas are topping out at orange. And as we take that down, notice now they're moving into sort of a yellowish gold. Now we're getting some cool purples and pinks in the jacket for the shadows. We've got some dark blues to indicate some of the midtones there on the tree. There we go. Now the road has gone pretty flat in that particular zone. I want to open it up just a little bit so there's a bit of modeling there, a little bit of a gradient. But looking at the false color makes it really easy. 
Now the monitor comes with a complete guide to help you understand sort of where on the histogram or the threshold each color represents, but this really is pretty useful. Remember, just think of it this way. The brighter, the sunnier, the orangier it is. The cooler, the darker, the purpler or dark as night it is. And as I adjust here, I can use that false color to really give me a good idea. If I'm overexposed, dramatically underexposed, or just about right. Where I've got a few hints of orange and some bright yellows in there for the highlights. I've got some cool purples and blues. That looks about right. But I don't just have to stop there. If I hit F3, it's gonna show me some zebra bars or exposure. And this helps you pick up the areas that are problematic. You'll see that the highlights there, for example, on the sign back there, have a little bit of zebra bars running. Those bars indicate areas that are starting to get too hot or overexposed. It's okay to have a little bit on some of your highlights, but don't go too far or you're overexposing. If I keep opening that up, you'll start to see some in the snow on the ground. And that's definitely way too bright. Let's just pull that in. So just a hint. There we go. Just the brightest whites on that sign are now showing zebra bars. And hey, there's an F4 button. Let's just hit that. Now I have an actual histogram, much like you're used to inside of Photoshop or Lightroom. And this lets you see what's going on with the shot. So I've got some rich shadows, but they're not clipping. As I move that side to side there, you can see the histogram change. That looks pretty good to me. And remember, you can easily cycle between the modes. So there I am with exposure. I see a few zebra bars over on my bright highlights for that white sign. Checking false color, I've got just a little bit of the rich, intense oranges indicating the bright whites and a good balance of the cooler tones. Some of the mid-tones are in there, some of the shadows looks pretty good. And then switching back over there to peaking, I could very quickly check my focus in case I bumped it. That looks a little bit better. So all of those things compensate for human flaws and the fact that as you're adjusting the camera or lighting conditions change, it's very easy to have things get just a little bit off. And hey, let's face it, when it comes to HD video, slightly out of focus or slightly exposed incorrectly is still wrong. So you want to make sure you get it right as close as possible in the camera. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at this monitor. Now remember, when you're using monitors like this, they're connecting via the HDMI port. But there's a whole range of solutions out there. You can check out other things like HDMI to HD-SDI adapters. That'll make it easy for you to connect professional monitors if you need it. Or you can go ahead and use other solutions. Be sure to head on over to Adorama.com. They've got all sorts of monitors to choose from at different budget points. And hey, while you're there, the Learning Center is filled with lots of articles all about shooting and making great video. My name's Rich Harrington. Thanks for checking out this episode of Adorama TV. great looking prints at low cost, be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.